From the moment she decided to pursue a medical career, Dr. Haberman knew that she wanted the dual role of physician and scientist, which would allow her to not only treat, but also understand and influence the care of complex human disorders. She earned her MD-PhD from Tel Aviv University and completed her residency at the Sheba Medical Center. As part of a fellowship at the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, Dr. Haberman became part of a large cohort conducting breakthrough research on Crohn's disease, whose findings have been accepted and adopted worldwide. Dr. Haberman enjoys hiking with her family and listening to music while playing along on the piano. Talpiot Xmed, leadership in healthcare. Hi, good evening. In my talk, I'll focus on personalized medicine in Crohn's disease. People look phenotypically very different from each other. Different people, even from the same family, have different predisposition for different diseases. These differences between people cannot be explained by their genes because we share 90-90% of our genome. In contrast, we share only 30% of our gut microbiome with each other, and we think that some of the differences between people may be explained by the different gut bacterial composition. We see differences also between different patients with Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a chronic infl inflammatory condition affecting the gastrointestinal tract. Most of our patients are diagnosed young, during childhood or early adulthood. Patients present with diarrhea, abdominal pain, fatigue, anemia, and weight loss. I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist. I care for children with Crohn's disease, and we see this increase in incidence of Crohn's disease worldwide and more so in children. This in increase is noted in westernized countries, but more recently also in urban areas in China and India, where those diseases barely existed before. We think this is linked to modern era, dietary and environmental triggers, as well as alteration we have made in our gut microbiome. So the rapid changes cannot be explained by genetics. So it has to be related to changes we have made in the way we live and eat. A lot of research is invested in treating Crohn's disease and several good therapies evolved. However, we still cannot cure the disease. Since it is a chronic disease of the young, patients require therapies for many years. With existing therapies, we are able to achieve sustained remission in less than 50% of the patient, which means that the other 50 still have ongoing inflammation. Most therapies are directed toward modulating the immune system, and those therapies have toxicity and are linked with higher incidence of infections and cancer. The disease affects the gut. When I perform the endoscopy, I can easily visualize the actual disease and evaluate the injured gut. I can estimate the disease severity and I can follow the disease course directly with my own eyes. I look at the biopsies under the microscope and I see the layers of the involved gut. However, it is clear to me and to all of our patients that more research is needed to try and understand what is it that we see? What cause Crohn's? Why some do not respond to therapy? Which other new drug targets we should discover for those failing therapy? How will we know who will respond to which therapy? And what is the role for gut microbiome and the diet in those conditions? We in the lab aim to answer those questions because we think that gaining this knowledge will help us better treat and even cure Crohn's disease. I'm still amazed by the fact that I see in clinic two patients that present exactly the same. They have similar symptoms, similar endoscopic findings. I treat them with the same medication, but after one year, they look different. One heals his injured gut while receiving the first line of therapy. 
the other failed the first therapy, failed three additional classes of medication, and required surgery. Our goal is to try and understand the different biology in those that respond and not respond, looking into the affected injured gut. We look for new targets for future therapies and we identify markers for response. To understand this, we need to dive into the three main layers of the normal gut lining. In normal conditions, things are capped in layers. The gut bacteria is localized in the lumen, in the external mucus layer close to the epithelial barrier, but far enough from the immune system in the inner layer. And the epithelial function as a border, as a fence between the bacteria and the immune system. When this barrier is injured in Crohn's disease, bacteria are now translocating from the external layer to the inner layer where they meet the immune system and the immune system gets activated, which further increase the injury and fuel up the abnormal inflammation, altogether leading to this abnormal interaction between the gut bacteria, the epithelial barrier, and the immune system. What is this gut microbiome? So in the last decade, we learned that the gut microbiome is made up of trillions of bacteria, and we are only beginning to understand how many important and diverse roles those play in our body. This large bacterial community is established during childhood. Then it stabilizes in most healthy adults and is referred to as our second genome. A healthy gut microbiome communicates with the intestinal cells, help digest certain food, and prevent disease-causing bacteria from sticking and invading the intestinal walls. In addition, it helps educate our immune system to differentiate between bad and good bacteria. Taking all this into account, acknowledging the fact that there are no good animal models to study Crohn's, our research includes large human cohorts. We use samples from the gut to characterize those interactions in the affected lining of the gut. We use clinical phenotype of the patient in addition to big data, different omics, and machine learning analysis. We characterize the bacterial population, the type of the immune activation, and the gut epithelial functions, trying to capture all those important personalized signatures that will help us build models for defined outcomes. Using this approach, we have already seen that there are some bacteria that are un increased in Crohn's, others with anti-inflammatory function that are decreased in Crohn's. We defined bacteria that are linked to disease severity and can predict future disease flare. We define models that is linked to the development of disease complications and need for surgery. Others and we define immune signature that are linked to response to therapy, and we have shown that part of the immune activation is more aggravated in older versus younger children. We have shown the metabolic and mitochondrial functions of the epithelia are key factors that maintain this barrier function and can be an important target for future interventions. All those are important research questions and findings. But when using big data and patient samples, one can only determine association. In order to test causality, we are building models and we use the disease tissue and the gut bacteria from the patient to build our personalized disease models. We can determine causality, we can better understand what is the underlying barrier and metabolic functions that we need to fix. Which bacteria are linked to the immune activation that we need to modify. We build those to test for causality, but also as a platform to test for new therapies. We can screen different drugs using those models and test for toxicity and effect before we move on to clinical trials in patients. So to summarize, I hope I was able to convince you that we are dealing with a complex disease, that the environmental triggers, diet, and the gut microbiome are involved in its pathogenesis, 
that while Crohn's patients present similarly, they respond different to therapy because their underlying biology in the affected gut is different. We are now able to use big data and different models to tell us from the start which patient will respond to which therapy and to guide us toward new targets for those who are failing existing therapies. Thank you. Talpiot Exmed, leadership in healthcare.